If there's a heaven on earth for captive red lizards, this place just might be it. There are literally acres and acres of happy lizards, and it's all because of one man's passion for them. Hey, what's up? Ken and Harkin here, and I'm with Ty Park of Ty's Lizards. Today, we're gonna find out why he's devoted the next chapter of his life to breeding some of the rarest iguanas on earth. As a pro bike rider, action sports announcer, and off-road adventurer, I'm always on the go. But for my true passion as a reptile breeder, I created my own sanctuary in South Florida. This is Camp Kenneth. I cannot believe the scope of what you have going on here. You definitely have a lot of passion for these animals. Thanks, Ken. And, uh, yeah, I've been reptile lover all my life. I can't remember going back when I was three, catching snakes in Korea, uh, going to the ocean and just playing with different type of uh, you know animals in the ocean. I just I've been an animal lover all my life, and since I retired, I refocused my uh, attention to breeding real lizards, and this is kind of combination of all that passion and you know drive that I have for. Really, these very rare uh, lizards like Cyclorus, uh, Hydrosaurus, Tinosaurus. Yeah. And um, yeah, this is my passion. Well, who do we have right here? Uh, this is actually Anders. He's, I've heard uh, of him, man. He's kind yeah. of famous on social media, bud. Yeah, he's the uh, Grand Cayman Island oh, my blue iguana. Yeah, he's probably a little shy because you guys are here. Okay. But I had him for probably about, I'd say about. Four years, maybe? Oh, yeah. Come He's on. got a beautiful blue head. Yeah. And, and these yeah. are the hybrid species, correct? Yes, this is hybrid. Um, pure ones we're not supposed to have. And these were crossed either with Cuban iguana, which is Nubula nubula, uh -huh. or uh, Little Cayman Iguana Island. Uh, and those are Nubula caymanensis. Gotcha. And I believe this one was probably a product of. Um, Luisai and Caymanensis, I think. Now, the Luisai are a species that are in threat. Actually, all Cyclora are actually a very and threatened dangerous. species. Yes. So what exactly are you trying to do by breeding these animals for the pet industry? Well, basically, number one, it's my passion. And number two, I fell in love with them as a pet. Okay, and uh, they're my dogs. Yeah. And I want to, because I love them so much as pets, I want to share that with other people. Cool. Okay. And but more than that, I really have passion for helping them in the wild. So I'm trying to uh, commercialize them and take the profit and help out the wild population by donating uh, the profit to uh, conservation work. That's amazing. So. You know, you were you were mentioning earlier when we were talking that you know you you've had a, a fortunate life, you've worked hard, mm -hmm. and uh, this is not you know your business is not necessarily about making money for you. It's about no. making money for these actual animals. So they become in essence ambassadors to their wild brethren. Yeah, because these are I, I brought, produce them and sell them. There's less pressure to take them out of the wild, right? Because the the uh, if we don't produce enough, and the market demand that these guys sell for twenty thousand, it'd be more likely that they'll be smuggled out. Right. Whereas I sell the babies anywhere between two hundred to thousand, therefore it's, it's less profitable for them to smuggle these out. Therefore, I think in that way we help them out also in in, in conservation ways. So. Yeah, that, that's exactly right, and that's happening across the board with so many different reptile species like turtles and tortoises, you'll run into the same thing. Right. If you make these animals uh, endangered and you, you take away the ability for us to captive breed and sell mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. in essence you're going to wind up putting extreme pressures on those animals in the wild and then there won't be any left because you're right. never going to stop smugglers, to be perfectly well, honest, yeah, except this way. A lot of people have different roles in conservation. They do have their own role. For a person like me, I have my own role. And, you know, people who work with them in the field, they have their own role. We need to work together. Gotcha.
Now, cyclora, not necessarily the only animals you're working with. You have some other species of uh, lizards, other species of iguana that are extremely mm -hmm. rare also mm -hmm. that most people don't really know about in captivity. Right. Want to take a walk, maybe? Can I get sure. you to go over there? Sure. I'm going to show you some of my tinosaurus. Oh, excellent. Just walking around Ty's place, it's hard not to be in awe of the size and quality of the structures he has built for his animals. A lot of thought has clearly gone into every aspect of his facility here. So as we're heading uh, to the Centinosaurs, the spiny tails, I noticed that there are a lot of different uh, materials used for the different rhino cages. Like you have different cages. What's going on with that? Well, uh, actually, what you're looking at is the third type of uh, cages we're building. And this is probably the combination of all the mistakes we made with the first and second uh, type of cages that we built. Uh, first type of cage we built uh, was way too expensive to build. Okay. And what I'm trying to do with my goal of trying to conserve as much money as possible for conservation, I need to be profitable. Uh, so we decided to save money on building instead of you know feeding and daily care for them. Gotcha. So this is what we came up with. Cool. Can we take a look inside? Sure. Um, I never get tired of seeing rhino iguanas. Yep. They're one of my favorites. So basically what you're seeing in here is this is a 20 foot by 20 foot pen. Uh, you see a female over there guarding her nest. Although she laid about a month ago, she's still guarding her nest area. And that's the house that we have. Um, when the temperature falls down below 50 or 55, we turn the heater on. Okay. So basically, they stay here all their life. They never go to see the inside. This is just perfect for them. You notice the uh, sprinkler system. Uh, so we really don't have to worry about watering. Uh, if it doesn't rain for three days, we turn the sprinkler system on. That's fantastic. And they are fed about five times a day. Wow. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, five times, five a, times a week. Yes. <laughs> five yes. times a week. I was yes. going to say, you'd have some portly <laughs> rhino water. Exactly. All right, I guess we'll keep moving on. All right, let's do that. There were literally dozens of species to check out here, and I could spend all day showing them to you. But there is one species that Ty was really keen on showing off to us that encompasses his devotion to these animals. All right, Ty, what do you have in your hands here? Okay, now this is probably the rarest of spiny tail iguana in the world. This is called Tinosaur Bakeri, and they come from probably about three square miles in, in a place called Wotila Island off of Honduras. Wow. And um, this is a species that I really like working with. Um, probably in the last couple years, I produced 120 plus babies. Um, and they're probably, I don't know, maybe that at least tripled the US population. Oh, no way. Yeah. So you're uh, captive breeding. Mm -hmm. And you're doing this so that these animals, I'm making them nervous here by moving my hands, I gesticulate. But, <laughs> but your captive breeding essentially mm -hmm. has caused an assurance colony of these mm -hmm. animals. Yeah, well, the thing is, we can't really, they're not going to allow us to take the babies and, and bring them back. Yeah, okay. repopulate the population there. The problem is not that they don't breed well there, it's just that they don't have enough space. Okay. Uh, it's such a small area, and then, you know, with the all, all the hotel building and it's just human encroachment into their uh, uh, habitat. So as long as we save their habitat, uh, they should do fine. Gotcha. So this is the rarest centinosaur on earth. Yes. And obviously spiny tail iguana because mm -hmm. they have that really nice spiny tail. And the way the difference between a centinosaur and a cyclora mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is, you know, if you want to tell the difference is the cyclora will have spikes, then a break, mm -hmm. then spikes, and then a break here at their mm -hmm. tail. Whereas mm -hmm. these guys, they continue, they continue on. And I guess you know, cyclora itself means circular, so mm -hmm. the circular tail. So this, but did, you know, do these guys make good pets as well? Uh, actually, bakeri and a pectinata, banana more pectinata, are two of the mellowest okay. of the spiny tail one. I know he's opening his mouth, but remember that I don't touch any of these animals. Right. So for them to be this calm, okay, and haven't really had human interaction, and that's the calm animal, really. Definitely. Definitely. 
Well, you know what? I've had a great time hanging out with you and learning about yeah. some of the methodology behind why you're doing all this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important. It's kind of how I believe, you know, we got to put these animals into captive situations, but do it correctly and educate the people that are buying these animals so they can live long, happy lives for themselves and for you as their keepers. Thanks so much. You're welcome. All Anytime. Right. Thank you.